Good afternoon, everyone. It is Saturday, April the 18th. It's uh, 28 degrees here in Santa Rosa, Lima, Peru. And uh, it's too hot to film up in the roof today. So I decided to film inside. Well, as I was studying Revelation chapter 9 in the morning, wow, this chapter is heavy. And the Lord revealed a lot to me within this chapter. And, uh, and I'm just going to warn you that it is disturbing for what's about to take place upon the earth after God removes his people from the earth. So here we go. Revelation chapter 9. And the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven unto the earth, and to him was given the key of the bottomless pit. Now, have you noticed that this star is referred to as a he? And I believe without a doubt that, that the stars that you see in the night sky are angels. Uh, the Bible references angels and stars all the time. If you go onto YouTube and you type in what stars really look like, you will see many different videos of people filming stars with their telescopes zooming into the stars and you see that many of them have different energy patterns some are calm some look very violent some are different colors and it's 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 very fascinating is that what the spirits of angels look like it's quite possible or is that their abode is that where where they stay where they live but I will share a link in the description section of an amazing video about stars and angels. I think you guys would um, be impressed with it. Uh, it's quite the video. So carrying on here, verse 2. And so he opened the bottomless pit. So the angel that fell from heaven or... Uh, left heaven to the earth with the key, opened the bottomless pit, and there arose a smoke out of the pit as the smoke of a great furnace, and the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the pit from the smoke. Now this bottomless pit is the place where the wicked spirits from the days of Noah are. These were the very spirits where when Jesus casted them out of people, they pleaded to him, do, do not send us to the pit. This was the pit that those spirits were talking about. Now here's an interesting article that I believe is bang on. It's called The Bottomless Pit. The Bottomless Pit is not hell or Hades, nor the place of abode of the spirits of wicked men and women go until the resurrection of the dead. Neither is it Tartarus, the prison house of the fallen angels, which Jude 6 and 7 talk about. By the way, those angels in Jude were the ones who came to the earth in the Genesis days, Genesis 6, and mixed with uh, the daughters of men to create the Nephilim or the giants. So it's not the prison where they are, nor the lake of fire where the final hell is, as it says in Matthew 25, 41. But it is the place of confinement of the demons who are not Satan's angels, but a class of disembodied spirits from the race of the Nephilim. Um, supposed by many to be the disembodied spirits of the inhabitants of of, of those who were in the days of Noah, who God wiped out with the flood. Um, now, they also have liberty and, and opportunity, as in the days of Christ, who tried to re-embody themselves again in human bodies. They are wicked, unclean, and vicious and have power to derange both mind and body. 
Here are some verses. Matthew 12, 22. Matthew 15, 22. Luke 4, 35. Luke 8, 26. And Luke 9, 42. Now, they are the familiar spirits of the Old Testament and the seducing spirits of which were the New Testament and what we have today. They wander about in desolate places. Now, Jesus used them to illustrate how it, how it will be in the last days when demonic power shall be increased over, the seven, over them sevenfold. He said, when the unclean spirit or demon is gone out of a man, he, the demon, walk, walketh through dry places seeking rest and findeth none. Then he saith, I will return into my house from hence I came out. And when he has come, he finds it empty, swept, and clean. This is talking about the believer who had their had a demon cast out of them. Okay, and they've given their life to Jesus. And it's clean, their place. Or, or yeah, they, they come to him and... Uh, they get the demon cast out. Then it says, Then goeth he and takes with him seven other spirits, more wicked than himself, and they enter in and dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. So that's talking about a person, again, who, who gets a demon cast out of them by, by, by a born-again believer, a pastor, or someone who is of God, and they come to church, and I've seen this happen, actually. I, I actually seen it happen to a few people that even I've led to Christ. I've even prayed out demons out of, uh, out of these people, and I've seen it. And I'm not going to mention names here. Some of you may even be watching, but they get casted out, and they maybe go to church for a little bit, and something happens where they don't go to church anymore. And this is what it's talking about. Now this demon, he goes out, he goes and he takes seven other spirits more wicked than himself. And they enter, enter into this person. And the last state of that person is worse than the first. Let that be a warning to you guys. You, you can't mess around with God. And I've seen it where these people have made so many bad mistakes and choices. And they're just ruining their bodies and they're ruining their families. And so much, so much destruction and chaos just follows their lives. And, I, and I've seen it. And I'm witnessing, watching these people who I care about are just being destroyed because they have more than just one demon within them. And this is what the Word of God is saying here, folks. It's not a game. Even so shall it be also until unto this wicked generation that is here right now, that the manifestation of demons are everywhere. These unclean spirits that are angry and they're tormented from the days of Noah are tormenting people right now. And I've seen it. This will account for those who will take the mark of the beast and worship him. The mark of the beast, we're going to get into that in future chapters, but to talk quickly about that, that mark is already coming. It's, it's already here. They already have the technology. Bill Gates wants to enforce everyone to take, and the WHO um, Foundation, which is the World Health Organization, they want everyone to be vaccinated and to take that microchip. And you do not want to know what's in those vaccines or in the microchip. So it's coming, folks. And the prophet Isaiah calls it a covenant covenant with death and hell. So when Christ casts, so when Christ cast out 
the legion of those devils out of the demonic person in the Bible, they besought him to not cast them into the deep, that is, not into the abyss or the bottomless pit. So, folks, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, uh, something really bad is about to come upon the earth. Once Jesus removes his people from the earth, that's it. The bottomless pit's going to be open and all hell is going to break loose. And, and these spirits are going to just torment you guys. Day after day after day, there will be no rest. And there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth, and unto them was given power, as the scorpions of the earth have power. The only way John can describe these evil spirits is like locusts that devour everything. Some believe that these locusts type um, could be military helicopters or military tanks or jets. Uh, but that's just one theory. It's possible that what John saw in his vision was a mixture of these demons coming out that looked just terrifying, like locusts and scorpions. And and what he saw was a was a vast army where these demons were controlling these people to make war war against um, against those who have given their life to Jesus during the tribulation days. Verse 4, And it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of God in their foreheads. So it's interesting how wicked people who are demon-possessed, even what you see nowadays, who are demon-possessed, who have anger, bitterness, and they're hurting, they just want to destroy everything. They are pro-abortion, murdering innocent babies. Just They just want to destroy everything that gets in their paths. They torment animals. They murder animals. Um, it, it's, it's actually quite opposite to what God tells us to do. God says to be fruitful and multiply the earth. But these people just want to destroy it. And they want to depopulize the the population on the earth. But those who are sealed by God during this time, which are the 144,000 Jews, and those who give their life to Jesus during those time, that time, they will be sealed on their forehead and no one can touch them. No demon, no devil. So that is why God is going to be removing his bride from the earth before all this starts to happen. Verse 5, And to them it was given that they should not kill them, but that they should be tormented for five months. And their torment was as the torment of a scorpion when he striketh a man. It's going to be painful, folks. So all these wicked people who love their sins, led other people astray, they abused children, they had fornicated, they had cheated on their spouses, they had murdered, they had harmed others, and most importantly, they had rejected God, pushed him out of their life, mocked him and scoffed him. They are actually reaping what they have sown. So keep in mind that God always gives mankind free will. You have the free will and the choice to go rob a bank, commit a felony, cheat on your spouse, go and murder someone, you you have the free will to do that. But just get prepared for the consequences. And remember, the Bible says that a person will reap what they sow. So I can't even imagine how terrifying it's going to be for those who are left behind. And in those days shall men seek death, and shall not find it, and shall desire to die, and death shall flee from them. The pain and torment will be so unbearable 
that people will just want to die, but they cannot. Verse 7, And the shapes of the locusts were like unto horses prepared unto battle, and on their heads were as it were crowns like gold, and their faces were as the faces of men. So I, I do believe that these are the fallen angels from the days of Enoch and the days of Noah. And they are coming up from the pit in their in their form. And uh, many people will probably be deceived. They'll probably believe that they're UFO or something, or aliens. And they had hair as the hair of woman, and their teeth were as the teeth of lions, just ferocious. And they had breastplates as it were breastplates of iron, and the sound of their wings was as the sound of chariots of many horses running into battle. And they had tails like unto scorpions, and there were stings in their tails, and their power was to hurt men for five months. So it's possible what, again, what John saw was maybe a mixture of these demons and a vast army, helicopters and just tanks and whatever. But nevertheless, these demons are going to come out of the pit and they are going to look terrifying. And they're just because they are already tormented and they know that their time is short. They are going to be tormenting others. Verse 11, and they had a king over them, which is the king of the bottomless pit, whose name in Hebrew tongue is Abaddon, but in the Greek tongue hath his name Apollyon. So the name Abaddon or Apollyon literally means destroyer. Like this king who is the Antichrist, he's going to be leading this whole army and many of, you, many of you have heard about the Antichrist, who, in my opinion, I believe that he's, he's alive and well right now as we speak. But the Bible says that he will not be revealed until the restrainer is lifted, which I believe is the Holy Spirit. And when the Lord calls his bride up into heaven, which is the church or the body of Christ or believers, and they get caught up out of here, that's when the Antichrist will be revealed. That's when Abaddon or Apollyon will be revealed. And he will be the king controlling, enslaving every person who was left behind. Now, some scholars believe that Abaddon or Apollyon is not Satan himself, but is one of his highest general demons. Because later we find in the book of Revelation that Satan is actually in prison for a thousand years. And the, um, the, the Antichrist and the false prophet is thrown into the lake of fire, which Satan gets thrown into the lake of fire as well. So either way, he's still under the control of Satan. So Satan is still masterminding this whole um, army. Verse 12. So one woe is past, and behold, there come two woes more hereafter. And the sixth angel sounded, and I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar, which is before God, saying to the sixth angel, which had the trumpet, loose the four angels which are bound in the great river Euphrates. And the four angels were loose, which were prepared for an hour and a day and a month and a year for to slay the third part of men. And the number of the army of the horsemen were 200,000 thousands. And I heard the number of them. Now, I believe through previous study that this army, this vast army is the army of China. So this is what I believe. And these um these these four angels which are loose will be controlling this army to go into battle verse 17 and thus i saw the horses in the vision and them that sat on them having breastplates of fire and of jackanth and brimstone and the heads of the horses were as the heads of lions and out of their mouths issued fire and smoke and brimstone. Wow. 
So it's possible what John saw again could be tanks or some military equipment firing like brimstone, like missiles, which is like sulfur and, you know, gunpowder. It's possible. Verse 18, by these three was the third part of men killed by the fire and by the smoke and by the brimstone, which, which issued out of their mouths. For their power is in their mouth and in their tails, for their tails were like unto serpents and had heads, and with them they do hurt. <laughs> I believe it. And the crazy thing is that men just cannot die for five months. And the rest of the men which were not killed by these plagues, yet repented not of their works, of their hands, that they should not worship devils and idols of gold and silver and brass and stone and of wood, which neither can see nor hear nor walk. So these people still refuse to repent of their sins. They love their gold. They love their idols made from metal, from stone, from wood. Could be cars, all their, uh, all their vehicles, just all their idols. They still hold on to those things, even though the wrath of God is poured out crazy neither they repented repented of their murders nor of their sorceries nor of their fornication nor of their thefts so people are still not repenting and turning to god i mean that 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 just astonishes me now sorceries in the bible is the um is uh where you get the greek word uh pharmakias that's where we get our English word, pharmaceuticals or pharmacy, which is where we get drugs from. And um, unfortunately, sorcery is rampant today. It's just under a different name, which is drug dealing. Buying drugs, doing cocaine, crack cocaine, meth, heroin. This is all sorcery. I know because... I was a sorcerer, if you would call that, call it that, uh, back in the day before I knew Jesus, which was a drug dealer. I was a drug dealer, and I was harming people's lives all for the love of money. And what does the Bible say about money? It says, the love of money is the root of all evil. And so people murder, they cheat. They, um, they rape, they pimp girls, young, innocent girls, all for money. They do whatever it takes for money. Just sad, destroying people's lives for money. But here's the difference. When you are in Jesus Christ, you don't have to seek after money. You don't. He will provide for you, however that is. If, if he wants to make one of his childs wealthy, then praise the Lord. But remember, if you're going to be wealthy with, with God's money, know that that is his money so that you can bless others. And that is why we do what we do here with the backpacks and the school supplies. I mean, it's the least what we can do because it all belongs to God. It's all God's money and it's... and. My body belongs to him. And so um, I have seen God's blessing time after time because we try to be as obedient as we can to him and do what he wants us to do. Anyways, I don't want to go down that rabbit trail because I've shared that already in the last uh, videos. But, uh, but I know that, uh, that many of you also have ministries and do the things that God has called you to do. And I've seen the blessings in, in, in your lives as well. So God bless you guys for that. So to finish with this video, um, the reality is, is, is that this day is coming and it's going to come. And uh, if you're watching this video and you haven't given your life to, to Jesus yet, 
uh, still not too late. There's still time before his coming. But if it's too late, then this is what you're going to be expecting. This is what to, to be expected. It's not going to be pretty and it's not going to be a big party. So I'm praying for all you guys that this video will at least open your eyes to at least see the truth of what's about to come upon the earth. Well, God bless you guys and uh, we'll see you tomorrow.